first official Toy Story 4 trailer has released today after a series of clips and teasers before it, but I have to say, this is what really has got me excited over this movie. There are so many new and exciting moments, ideas, and references in this trailer, which is why we are going to theorize, examine, and break it all down. Hello, mm -hmm. I'm Isaac from Once Over Videos, where we discuss fun topics for fun people. On my channel, I focus on spreading magic by examining Disney films, so if you are new here, consider subscribing. The trailer begins by Woody providing one of his famous announcements to the rest of the toys in Bonnie's room, which reminds me a lot of his staff meetings of the past. Everyone, Bonnie made a friend in class. Oh, she's already making friends. Right away, we get to see many of the toys we have grown to love from both Andy's room and Bonnie's. And we learn Bonnie must have grown out of Sunnyside daycare since now she's going to school, which is really exciting for the little girl, except I'm a little worried for her. No, no, she literally made a new friend. Through all of these shots of Bonnie building Forky, we see kids in groups at other tables, but it appears Bonnie is all by herself. She's a passionate ball of energy who can also be pretty shy and reserved, so I hope she's doing okay with friends in school. But I think when she decided to make Forky that she might have done so when she was all alone. Bonnie might have made a friend when there weren't any around, which is probably why she becomes so attached to him. I want you to meet Forky. Uh, hi. Hello. Hi. When we are introduced to Forky, he definitely is extremely nervous and uncertain of what is going on, which we can tell just by him saying hi. He's completely out of his element, but the toys welcome him with open arms as Andy's toys had welcomed Buzz, Jesse, and Balzai, and as Bonnie's toys had welcomed Andy's. The excitement is just a little too much for Forky though. Forky falls over and also falls apart, but interestingly enough, we see on the bottom of Forky's feet, Bonnie's name. Just as Andy had marked his own toys with his name, it appears Bonnie has continued that tradition. And it makes me wonder if Andy's toys have been marked by Bonnie as well. Does Andy's name still reside on Woody's boot? I don't know, but I think it would be fitting for him to have a new name now that he's with Bonnie. Then Mr. Pricklepants makes a very astute remark. He's a spork. From the faces of the toys and Pricklepants' question, it's clear that sporks are not a common toy to come to life. This is a new and odd occurrence, and I think they are definitely confused at how this came to be. Then, as You've Got a Friend in Me begins to chime away, we see the studios behind animated masterpieces are also, to no surprise, behind Toy Story 4. And then we learn Woody's analysis on Forky's role in Bonnie's life. Forky is the most important toy to Bonnie right now. Dolly, Mr. Potato Head, and even good old Sheriff Woody are being set aside for Forky, and Woody supports that relationship. We all have to make sure nothing happens to him. I really love that line from Woody because it shows how far he's come. He's willing to put his ego aside in service of his owner. Woody doesn't make playtime about himself. But while Bonnie sleeps, Forky has his own ideas. He's squirming around and eventually he breaks free. Woody, we have a situation. I am not a toy. I find this idea of rejecting being a toy to be a fascinating discussion. We've seen Woody embrace being a toy and supporting his owners. Buzz's initial rejection that he was a toy, Stinky Pete's interpretation that toys that are played with have finite lives while toys on display will have immortality, and now we have Forky who wants to fulfill his original function and be tossed away, which is the very fate that Lotso adamantly fought against. I was made for Flexo ball. soup, salad, maybe chili, and then the trash. Forky abandoned ship and Woody is not too far behind and I think this is where the adventure will truly begin in Toy Story 4. When Woody jumps after Forky, we see on the vehicle, it's a Tri-County RV, which is the location of Andy and Bonnie's home. Everything from the Pizza Planet to Sunnyside to Al's Toy Barn are all within the Tri-County, and I guess there is also an RV rental place too. Next, Forky asks an extremely deep philosophical question that I am interested to see how they'll answer in the film when they show the month of this film's release. Why am I alive? Now, Woody doesn't go into detail on why these toys actually come to life. I mean, I want to know why toys come to life, but at the same time, I don't know if any answer could be satisfying or even relevant to the narrative. Just as humans can't fully grasp why we are alive, I kind of would prefer if the toys are in a similar situation. Toy Story has never tried to answer how toys are alive, but what their purpose is, and that's what Woody attempts to explain to Forky. You're Bonnie's toy. You are going to help create happy memories that will last for the rest of her life. 
even though Woody's doing his best with Forky, Forky is kind of in his own world, trying to figure out himself, and that's definitely testing Woody's patience. But together, they make their way to the historic downtown of Grand Basin, where Woody peers into the window of an antique store titled Second Chance Antiques, which was established in 1986, which is actually the year Pixar was founded. And it is here at Second Chance that Woody sees a part of the toy he loves, Bo Peep's lamp. Bo? Forky, come on! Woody and Forky enter the antique store and are met by a frightening character, Gabby Gabby, who rises out of a stroller like a being of the undead. Hi there, my name is Gabby Gabby. And when Woody attempts to leave, he's instructed he's not allowed. We can't stay. <laughs> yes, you can, boy. Then we are met with some seriously disturbing marionettes that unrelentlessly pursue Woody and Forky. They appear to be almost zombie-like henchmen for Gabby, and of course their actions make Gabby appear to be the villain. But in recent in years, Pixar doesn't typically reveal their villains so clearly, so I'm still skeptical about Gabby and her motivations. What would be the incentive of keeping other toys in an antique store? Maybe she needs workers or wants Woody so she can use him to destroy Bo Peep. I'm not so sure right now. What we see next is Bo Peep coming to the rescue to stop Gabby and to reunite with her love, Woody. What are you doing here? No time to explain. Come with me. Behind them, as they run through the antique store, appears to be Duke Kaboom, the Canadian Daredevil toy, and Ducky and Bunny, who are the carnival plushies from earlier teasers. And then jarringly, we flash to Bo and Woody underneath a vehicle, which is a scene we will see later. Then Bo Peep playfully retorts to Woody. Aw, Sheriff Woody, always coming to the rescue. As we have seen in other clips and throughout the previous movies with Bo Peep, Bo has always been a supporter of Woody's adventures and his obligation to protect the other toys and work for the best interest of the owner. But now it doesn't seem she needs rescuing. Since she left Andy's room, she's discovered a life for herself. Who needs a kid's room when you can have all of this? It appears Bo Peep is going to be offering Woody a new point of view. She's presenting a different lifestyle to the one he knew. The official summary of the film explains that old and new friends will show Woody how big the world can be for a toy. So I think this world that Bo has created for herself is going to be an intriguing new life Woody will consider taking part in. In this story, I think Woody is going to have to make a very difficult decision on what type of toy he wants to be. Will he remain a toy supporting an owner or will he adventure off into the unknown with Bo? Or will Bo go with Woody back to Bonnie? The answers to what a toy's purpose is, I think is going to be shaken. Woody, aren't we going to Bonnie? As the music picks up, we see the rest of Bonnie's toys are concerned on where the rest of their friends are. And Trixie gets to say a similar line to one of my favorite lines from Toy Story 2. What are we gonna do, Buzz? Do we do, Buzz? Buzz takes off into the carnival after Woody and Forky, but in their absence, Bonnie appears to be scared she's lost her toys. She sadly copes with her friends gone and her parents attempt to cope the crying girl. And it's actually cool, both parents are there. We've only ever seen Bonnie's mother, so Bonnie's father is a welcomed addition. Then Woody and Bo walk into some type of hidden toy area and none other than the Tin Toy is featured within it. Tin Toy was the star of his own 1988 Pixar animated short and his story was what got the attention of Disney and served as the inspiration for Toy Story. I love that they included him in this lost toy place. And that bear with the banjo kind of looks like a country bear in the Disney parks, but I'm not sure. Then Woody admits he couldn't have thrived as well as Bo if he was in her shoes. No, you've handled this lost toy life better than I could. What I think we are seeing is Bo and Woody at the entrance to the secret party place for toys because the hiding place appears to have some type of electronics within it. By all the flashing lights, the coin inserter, and the fob on the machine, I think they are hanging out in a pinball machine, which is so cool. And then Bo explains that Woody isn't seeing the full picture of the world. Open your eyes, Woody. There's plenty of kids out there. Sometimes change can be good. When Bo and Woody are chatting, a little flight attendant toy bounces onto Woody's shoulder and seeing her on Bo's shoulder in the poster indicates to me this little girl is going to be a loyal companion for Bo. Even though Bo Peep is trying to get through to Woody, he's resistant, but she doesn't give up. You can't teach this old toy new tricks. You'd be surprised. What the trailer then shows next is Woody exclaiming that they are heading home, but I don't think that's how the ending of the movie will be. Going home, Forky. I'm coming! I doubt that Toy Story 4 will end in the exact same place Toy Story 3 did. 
they have to make the characters change in some way. So even if they go back to Bonnie, Woody, Forky, and Bo are going to be different. Then we see Buzz flying in the sky again, which I completely took for granted at first. We haven't seen him fly since the first film. That's awesome. And then we see a young Andy in his original room playing with Jesse and Buzz, and I'm kind of glad we are going to get something like that. I don't expect Andy to be in this movie at all at his current age, but I like that this person that these toys loved for so many years will still be thought about and will be tied in. I always thought of Toy Story as the tale of Andy's toys, so I'm happy that kind of legacy is continuing. Then we see the new Ducky, because the first Ducky was in Sid's room, get his foot stuck like we had previously witnessed in teasers, and do Kaboom saying his line. Kaboom. After that, Gabby Gabby sends her minions on Woody, which I think is part of the same moment we saw earlier, and then we get to see something I've been wondering for years. The moment Woody says goodbye to Bo in between Toy Story 2 and 3. I think Woody and Bo are underneath Andy's family vehicle in front of his house and I'm ecstatic to find out what happened to her. Bo then states a reality to Woody. Kids lose their toys every day. I think this is going to be part of Bo's argument to have him come with her. Maybe she's asking Woody to stop working towards supporting an owner. I think that's going to be a difficult argument to make for such a motivated and strong character like Woody who we've grown to believe. but. I'm ready to fully understand Bo's thoughts. I think her differing opinions could possibly set her up as an adversary for Bonnie's toys in some type of twist fashion, but man, would that be a difficult villain to swallow. Having Woody's love interest as the final villain of Toy Story could be extremely heavy. Then we see the final scene of Toy Story 3 as Woody is passed down to Bonnie, and we see something zoom across the sky, which I assume must be Buzz, but I can't tell. Throughout these moments, Woody is struggling with what he is meant to do. I was made to help a child. I don't remember it being this hard. Then Forky whispers in Woody's ear, Everything's gonna be okay. And the final snapshot from the movie before the title screen is Woody inside what appears to be Bonnie's backpack. Then the trailer concludes with the words Toy Story 4 and the release date of June 21st. There is another thing to discuss though. Throughout this trailer, we see text explaining that on the road of life, there are old friends, new friends, and stories that change you. From everything we know thus far, I think what this means is that we are going to see toys' lives altered. But how does Pixar move Toy Story forward without compromising the previous arcs of the story? I don't know how they'll do that. What I do think will occur though, is the final discussion on what the life of a toy is meant to lead to. While Woody has spent his life wrestling with his purpose and his responsibilities, Forky is a new toy who must figure out the same life issues under the guidance of Woody. I think we will witness the final test of these toys' love, friendship, and purpose. They are on a journey to see what the next part of their life will be. Thank you to my wonderful patrons over on Patreon who are amazing supporters of my videos. Today, we went through every little bit I noticed in the Toy Story 4 official trailer, but I might have missed something, so let me know what your thoughts and ideas were in the comment section. I was so excited to be able to have a Toy Story video. I have been thinking about Wheezy and uh, Slinky Dog for a while now since I've got these pops, and I was so excited to finally be able to see this trailer. To see me talk about the other big animated trailer that recently released, Frozen 2, or more Toy Story videos, you can find the links to those videos below. And if you'd like to continue to see more magical discussions like this one, then don't forget to click that subscribe button and the beautiful bell if you're new. As always, thanks for watching and have a magical day.